Hello, my name is Tom Ayer, senior staff writer with the Vermont Standard Newspaper, and this is Legislative Report with Representative Tesha Buss of Woodstock, who also represents Plymouth and Reading. Uh, pleasure to see you again, Tesha. Thanks for having me on, Tom. You bet. And uh, I thought because it's school break week and our families, our students and administrators are off uh, on vacation for the week, this might be an appropriate time to talk about education policy uh, in, in the state of Vermont. And I know that, uh, if I'm correct, you serve on the uh, ed House Education Committee, right? That's correct. It is a, it's a fun committee. There's 12 of us on the committee. We have a brand new committee chair this year. And all of a sudden in the past week, we have gotten a slew of bills put forth to our committee. Ah, and, and just to, to back up a second, did, did you seek an appointment to the education committee? Is it something you put in a, a request for? I know you've, you've been involved with a lot of early childhood initiatives over time. I was told when you, so to get on committees, you usually list um, five and you list them in order of importance to you. Ah, okay. So my first was human services because that is where childcare lives. But I was also told that you are either chosen because you know a lot about your subject matter or you're chosen because you don't know a lot about your subject matter mm -hmm. because they want to round out um they want to round out the committee and they want to make sure that there's not too much bias in, in either direction. That makes so, sense. yeah, it does make sense. Yeah. Uh, so then that's the reason why I put education next, which is, you know, my, my daughter is in um, elementary ed. Uh, she does, she struggled with a, a reading, dis, a disability in reading. And that was been a, that was a really challenging process for me. And it made me really question how education works and how we support kids on IEPs and 504s and what's equitable. And um, so it, it, it's really my curiosity that made that be my second choice option mm -hmm. for a committee. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you mentioned that there are several major initiatives that have just come forward in the last week. Uh, uh, let's touch on some of those. What are some of the highlights and, and some of the major pieces of, of legislation in the pipeline now? So there's a bill that has been put forth in both the House and the Senate, and I, I don't believe the Senate is going to take it up at all. And I think what we're going to do is take it up, but take it up, uh, take it up light, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and it is to discuss funding for independent schools. You know, we have four major academies here in Vermont, and they uh, they would be exempt because they are the only educational option for those communities. So instead of creating a union high school like we did in here in Woodstock, those academies, um, well, most of them were created in the 1800s and they were uh, they are the high school of that area, but they still don't have all of the regulations that public school have. For instance, that is the public school option but their private designation, uh, well, actually they're not designated, their, their ability to stay private allows them to have teachers that aren't certified teachers. So they can hire <laughs> someone who has done high level mathematics in their work environment, and then they can teach math at their high school where we would have to have that person at Woodstock as a public school be teacher certified. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. An example in our area would be Sharon Academy, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah. And then St. Johnsbury, I believe, and Bellows. Um, I'm trying to remember what the other two are, but I think St. Jay is also in that. The, uh, yes, the four major academies are Burn Burt, St. Johnsbury, Linden. Is it Linden or Lindenville? I should yeah, know. Yeah, I think it's this, Linden. But yeah. Linden. And... Why did it just go out of my head? Um, Sharon's not one of them? No. Sharon is not one of them because ah. there's a high school in White River that actually services the area. So that's the okay. main designation point is. So there are a lot of independent schools in Vermont and you can public dollars can go to those independent schools, even though those kids have a public school option. I see. Okay. Okay, so and, 
you mentioned that that this particular legislation you you you're, you're kind of taking a, a I think you use the word a light lighter look at what what does that mean that is it primarily going to be driven by the Senate or or um, that's a great question. Thank you for asking it. Yeah. What it means is that the bill that's been put forth would state or would require us only to fund children that go to the four major academies oh. and they would require them to be the designated school for that area. Mm -hmm. And that in essence would take away private funding from all other independent schools in our state. So parents are extremely yeah. concerned Frozen. about this be because, you know, Sharon Academy, I believe is around 85% uh, students who tuition to go there. Sharon Academy is predominantly a private school as opposed to a, a designated um one of the four designated academies so that's the distinction there um <clears throat> but there are about 15 percent of the students i think you just said 85 percent are tuition paying about 15 percent of the students at sharon academy <clears throat> elect to go there through school choice presumably is that how that works uh well there are people who come from out of state that go there okay. as well. So they wouldn't have any tuition option. I see. Okay. But if your town has school choice, and then I believe your tuition dollars then are follow your choice then to go to the Sharon Academy. Okay. So some people might have to move to one of those choice towns in order to get that tuition. That's what happens a lot in the state. And I think, um, that's what the bill is trying to do. The bill is trying to make sure that all education is equitable and that there is a is a level standard between all public and private institutions. And mm -hmm. we, we, we have legislation that's still going into effect to make sure that, okay, so you have a private academy or you have this private independent school, they may only want to take kids that have no learning disabilities or no, uh, you know, no intellectual or physical challenges. So what these earlier bills did was say, no, it has to be a level playing field. You have to be able to accept all students who want to go there. But there are there are some workarounds where mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you you might have that that you accept everyone, but you also have an educational standard where everyone has to read at a fifth grade reading level, which might that that child that's disabled might not have that fifth grade reading mm -hmm. level. So mm -hmm. that's what the bill is trying to do. And what I mean by going light is I don't think that we're going to overnight say, I, this is my intuition with the committee is that I have a feeling we won't overnightly say that we will stop funding private school. But I think we're gonna try to bring the educational and financial reporting standards more in line with public schools Absolutely. because public dollars are going there. Absolutely, totally. Absolutely. Um, uh, move, moving on, um, are, are there any other uh, major pieces of legislation moving through the committee now that you'd like to highlight? One thing I'd love to highlight is that we've had a couple of presentations on financial literacy. And ah. the legislature can't tell schools what they, uh, they can't tell them what to do for curriculum, but they can give a requirement for graduation in that financial literacy has to be taught. And then they'll give a description and there will be some examples of um, of what that is. And honestly, I'm so new that I haven't seen a bill like this before. So mm -hmm. it'll be, mm -hmm. I'm really interested in digging into this because uh, first of all, more kids go to college if they fill out their forms explaining their income. And and what they can afford and what grants or college loans that are very low interest might be able to be available to them. And that's the first part of it. But second of all, I think we teach a lot of high level math that isn't really accessible on a daily basis to Vermonters. And so financial literacy to me is a really exciting piece and, and it truly is a way to prepare us for life. Like what does education, what is it supposed to do? And Thomas Jefferson, I guess, uh, I heard recently a, a friend of mine say this in the legislature, Thomas Jefferson said, education should prepare our children to be good citizens. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you look at the level of, um, 
of indebtedness in this country. Uh, it's just endemic. And, and, and a lot of that is rooted in this sort of mentality of, oh, my debit card, my credit card, it's just, it's just a piece of plastic. It's not really money. I mean, this is the kind of psychology of it. And, and just t it, teaching the, the rudiments of, of, of financial planning and, and successful budgeting and so on seems like a very elemental thing. So it's, it's good to hear that, <clears throat> that, that that may be on the legislature's table this, uh, this session. Um, I, I think you might have spoken with Patrick a little bit last week about, um, you know, and you and I have talked um, uh, privately about uh, about this whole issue of school bullying and school violence. And so is there anything <clears throat> on the um, on the legislative plate right now that's addressing uh, those kinds of issues or is that not really? Yes. Before? Well, mostly we're talking about mental health overall, mm -hmm. um, which actually isn't in the education committee. It is in the human services committee. Right. And the educators came to us and, and superintendents and principals and said, please, please, please help us. If we create a solution to the problem by hiring more counselors to assist our school, A, we can't pull down federal dollars because we're not the designated agencies, we're just a school. A mental health professional that comes into the school can pull down those federal dollars, but they also have a network of other mental health professionals that support that mental health professional. So that when he or she may say, hey, I'm gonna take this tactic towards this form of bullying, and then it backfires, which of course is going to potentially happen from time to time, that person mm -hmm. then has a network to say, okay, that didn't work, please, somebody help me. And then new ideas will come. The school is the school's not always equipped to deal with all of those mental health challenges that, that cause bullying. And so in order for us to truly support our schools, we have to shore up our designated agents, which are the mental health professionals that come into the school. And also they go into the family's home and frequently, that's where the real work needs to be done is mm -hmm. where did this behavior, where did it come from? Um, and, and it may not be that the family is at fault. It might be that the family just doesn't have the tools that they need to help their kid. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Tasha, that about wraps things up for this edition of, of Legislative Update. Um, look forward to connecting with you again next week and uh, in the weeks to ensue. and, and uh, Good luck in your continued work with the legislature this session. Thank you so much, Tom. Have a great week. <laughs>